Yes, we are. Hi, my name's Stan Moulton. Welcome to another Let's Go Beekeeping. It's mid-February, the 14th today actually, Valentine's Day. We've got a special treat for our sweeties. We're going to feed bees today. Uh, the first choice for feed is of course honey. If you don't have that, and particularly this time of year, they may be out of honey, so we need to supplement them with something. So we're going to feed them today. I'm going to show you a variety of all the different kinds of feeders that are available. Uh, and ones that you can uh, make yourselves, homemade, uh, uh, quick, easy, inexpensive way to feed bees. Uh, let's first of all test the uh, water that we're going to be using to mix in our syrup and uh, see what the pH is. pH is a very important uh, uh, part of uh, healthy bees. Uh, we want the supplement that we're going to be giving our bees, in this case sucrose, to be the same acidity as honey, which is going to be around 4.5. So our water uh, and our sugar should be close to neutral, but let's test it and see before we feed it to the bees. So I've got some pH strips. Uh, I'm going to test the water. Water can vary greatly in its pH, so uh, this is Provo, Utah along the Wasatch Front. It's probably similar. And the water here is pretty close to neutral. We're at uh, 7. If you were going to use bottled water or distilled water or uh, something you've filtered yourself, this brand of bottled water is about six. We're going to take a gallon of warm water. I'll put it in uh, a bucket and mix it. With some absorbic acid. This is in powder form. If the, uh, the form you have is in uh, a tablet, a vitamin C pill, That'll work too. You just have to dissolve it in the water first before you put it in the sugar. So I'm going to take, I'll start with about just a little less than half a teaspoon. We'll mix this in and test the pH again. Remember we want our pH to be similar to honey which is going to be four, four, five. So the water is warm that will uh, mix faster. Let's test the pH now. We need more. This is about 6.5 is all. I added a little bit more ascorbic acid. Uh, just to get it uh, a little more acidic. It wasn't quite acidic enough. Now I'm going to pour the sugar in. And I'm not going to measure the ratio of this sugar exactly. One to one's a little too thin. Two to one's a little too thick. I'll have to stir forever and have hot water to start so it dissolves quicker. So I meet in the middle somewhere in between. If your syrup is too thin, it's more likely to ferment. It'll ferment faster. It'll sour. If it's too thin, it increases the uh, humidity depending on the type of feeder you're using. It can increase the humidity and moisture level inside the hive. If it's too thin, the bees will pick it up quickly and you'll just have to come back and feed again sooner than you really wanted to. So generally I keep mixing syrup in until the sugar floats on top. Then I know that the, uh, the water in there can absorb a lot more sugar and I call it good. And that generally ends up somewhere between 1 to 1 and 2 to 1.
so as we adjust the pH of the supplemental feed for our bees here on Valentine's Day, it's like the difference between giving your sweetheart cheap waxy chocolates or the good quality stuff. Uh, essential oils can increase the vapor pressure of the syrup, which makes it easier for the bees to smell and find. Uh, it also increases the likelihood of robbing. And so, depending on the time of year that you're feeding, uh, what the likelihood is of uh, triggering a, a robbing frenzy, you may think twice about putting some type of essential oil in there or uh, uh, vinegar. You could use vinegar to increase the acidity. Um, but it also is tempting for robber bees. So we're going to feed them just uh, straight sugar syrup. No, nothing else added into it. All right, we'll, we'll test our syrup mixture now. Dip it in for a half a second. Looks like we're at five. We'll call that close enough and feed this to the bees. All right, we're going to feed this colony here that's in a barn hive. I'll show you how the feeder in the barn hive works. We need to slide the lid over. You don't have to open the hive clear up to disturb them to do this, just enough to get your lid open. And the feeder holds uh, about a gallon of syrup. It has a float in it. I'll open my access to the feeder um, and uh, we'll make sure that the raft, the life raft for the bees or the float is, is loose. And I'll be careful as I can not to spill syrup so I don't trigger robbing. We'll keep it all in the feeder. Pour it in up to about the fill line. Helps if you have your hives level here, you can keep them overflowing. The bees um, may need a little primer since we're not using essential oils or vinegar or anything with any vapor pressure to stimulate them to come over and pick this up. I'll dip my hive tool in it and dribble a little bit over here. They'll get a taste of that syrup and they'll see where it's coming from. They'll follow that trail over to the the feeder. Edit this in somehow. Okay. So one of the reasons that you want, you may want to wear gloves, is propolis. When it's hot, it's really sticky, and you don't get it off. You're going to get this all over your clothes, all over your steering wheel, all over your seat belt, all over your iPhone. So you may want to wear gloves just for that reason. There we go. So next, uh, next option for feeding, uh, everyone would have around the house a mason jar and a lid. All you need to do is poke a few holes, small pinholes with the tip of a nail or screw in your lid and we fill this with syrup. There's good points and there's bad points of these. One, this is the best way to prevent robbing because your syrup is enclosed and it's a good way to feed them because you can put this right above the cluster and the heat from the cluster will make this syrup more accessible during colder weather to the bees. So the bad point about this is is it can leak syrup on the bees if it's not done right. So if I were to turn this upside down it'll drip a little bit until the suction the air, air in here is uh, filled. Um, feeding bees using an inner cover with a feed hole. I'll remove the lid, put the inner cover in. I'll use the mason jar upside down to keep this out of the sunlight and the wind. I'll use an empty box as a shell. Put the lid back on. It's a good way to feed bees. For feeding, we're going to use the sugar shim again. Uh, okay, these bees don't, don't need to be fed. Okay, I spoke dead. too soon. They're not dead, they're just down in the bottom box. Usually, uh, early spring, late winter, they're up in the top box because that's where the honey is and that's where the heat is. 
but occasionally they're down below, which is what they are today. So let's take this mostly empty super off and we'll we'll reduce the reduce the hive down to one box. Um, I'm going to use the sugar shim or rim shim again. Uh, you can see that we have a division board feeder in this one and there's a float at the bottom but the bees have gone in here and made comb. That's perfectly fine. I'm not going to cut this comb out. It just makes a good ladder for them to crawl out on if I want to feed syrup in there. So this one we're going to show you how to use a baggy feeder. This is an inexpensive way uh, to feed your bees. Everybody's got a Ziploc bag. This is only a quart one, but you may want to use a gallon, whatever, whatever you've got. We'll put some syrup in this and we'll set it directly above the cluster, just like we did on uh, the last one with the, uh, the sugar cubes. And then we'll poke a few holes in it. So these are notorious for drizzling syrup all over your bees. We only want to poke a few very small holes in the top, not on the sides, or it'll drip syrup all over the bees. So to do this, I'll take a knife, don't go all the way through, just a few holes, let the air out, a few little slits in there. You'll see as the air comes out and the syrup won't be enough to run over, but the bees can put their tongue in those spots, pick up syrup that way. Cheap, uh, cheap Great. syrup <clears throat> feeder. Another option for feeding again, a Boardman type feeder. It'll use a standard uh, small mouth mason jar. We'll put the syrup in it. It already has the holes in the lid. This fits in the entrance. This is uh, prone to robbing. It's so close to the entrance, it's easy for robbing bees and wasps to get in there and snitch some syrup. It also works well for water, if you want to put water in it. So uh, often I get the question, I have some old honey. They used to put honey in five gallon metal cans, right? And people have had those in the basement for who knows how long. I have some currently from my grandfather's bees, 1973, 74. And they want to use this. It's still consumable, but wouldn't it be better if they used that to feed the bees with and then got some fresh stuff back later in the summer? So if you know where that uh, honey came from and you know that it doesn't have any foul brood spores in it, it's okay to feed that. I know people that do all the time, but usually what happens is they'll end up uh, putting a medication in there to, uh, uh, to kill the foul brood, if just in case there is any in there. And so I just threw away two cans of old, old honey. It went to the landfill. Um, so I try not to feed them that old stuff. The uh, division board feeder we filled up last week, they still haven't consumed all of it, which is okay, but if it's in there much longer, it could sour or ferment. Uh, it uh, is best if they pick it up sooner. That's the disadvantage of the division board feeder. Okay. I spilled some syrup. You can see it missed the feeder tray and it's running down the bottom board and out the entrance. So that's a way to trigger robbing. Try not to do that. And next door we have maybe a sign of robbing. You can see there's little bits of wax, which is in, in, indicates that there may be some robbers in there uncapping the honey. An overview of the feeders that we've talked about today. First was our barn hive with a built-in feeder. Simply remove the lid, holds a gallon of feed, access hole is in the side of the inner nuke box. Boardman type feeder, this one works well for water. Also, it's prone to robbing. It's close access to robber bees and wasps. 
The bees, if they're cold and in a cluster, can't move over to pick up their feed. Next was the division board feeder. You remove a frame, put the feeder in its place. This is good for drowning bees, making bee soup. That's the disadvantage to it. The advantages are you don't have to have any extra equipment. A feed hole in the top of your lid. No inner cover. One piece of equipment. You can replace that after you're done feeding. Next we have a shell on the top of the inner cover. Upside down mason jar. The advantage is you have heat coming off of the cluster. It's easy access for them. Prevents robbing because there's no open syrup. You do need an empty box and an inner cover. Next is the sugar shim with sugar cakes. The advantage is the, v the bees can take advantage of the heat coming off of their cluster directly above them. This is a great way to feed bees in the winter. Prevents robbing. The only other equipment that you need to do this is your shim. The cheap homemade version, easy enough, a baggy feeder with some holes in the top. Thanks for joining us today. Next week we'll have a new subject. If you have something, no matter where you are, that you want to email us, ask us a question, and we'll answer it in the Beehive next week.